Time is the inexplicable raw material of everything. With it, all is possible. Without it, nothing. The supply of time is truly a daily miracle, an affair genuinely astonishing when one examines it. You wake up in the morning and lo, your purse is magically filled with 24 hours of the unmanufactured tissue of the universe of your life. It is yours. It is the most precious of possessions. No one can take it from you. It is unstealable. And no one receives either more or less than you receive. In the realm of time, there is no aristocracy of wealth and no aristocracy of intellect. Genius is never rewarded by even an extra hour a day. And there is no punishment. Waste your infinitely previous commodity as much as you will, and the supply will never be withheld from you. Moreover, you cannot draw on the future. Impossible to get into debt, you can only waste the passing moment. You cannot waste tomorrow. It is kept for you. You cannot waste the next hour. It is kept for you. You have to live on this 24 hours of daily time. Out of it, you have to spend health, pleasure, money, content, respect, and the evolution of your immortal soul. Its right use, its most effective use, is a matter of the highest urgency and of the most thrilling actuality. All depends on that. Your happiness, the elusive prize that you are all clutching for, my friends, depends on that. We shall never have any more time. We have, and we have always had, all the time there is. How is it that we have more tips and tricks, tools and technology, calendars and checklists than ever before, and yet we still always seem to be behind? How is it that we work longer hours, we're moving faster than we've ever moved in history, and yet we never seem to be caught up? How is it that we know more about time management today, and yet stress is at an all-time high? The reason why is because everything you know about time management is wrong. Everything that you've ever heard about time management is all logical. Today, time management is no longer just logical. Today, time management is emotional. And how our feelings of guilt and fear and worry and anxiety and frustration, those things dictate how we choose to spend our time as much as anything that's in our, in our calendar or on our to-do list. In fact, there is no such thing as time management. You can't manage time. Time continues on whether we like it or not. So there is no such thing as time management. Really, there is only self-management. Life is not just the passing of time. Life is not just the passing of time. Life is a collection of experiences, their frequency and their intensity. Life is not just watching the clock tick away. Life is a collection of experiences, their intensity, their frequency. When my friend Mark died at age 44, someone says, that's young to die. But what if he lived four lifetimes in one? It might not be too young. So here's what it, whatever the span of your life turns out to be, here's what you want to fill it up with, experiences and the intensity of those experiences. Learn to study what we call majors and minors. You pick up the phone. Here's what you must say when you pick up the phone. Is this a major conversation or a minor conversation? If it's minor, a few pleasantries and you're done. If it's major, maybe you've got to make a few notes. So here's the next one. Important conversations, make an agenda before you make the call. So what's major, what's minor? Now here's the key on this. Don't major in minor things. If you take up major time to do minor things, I'm telling you, you'll be behind the curve constantly. Here's what we learn in sales training. What's major time and what's minor time? Here's minor time, thinking about prospects. Here's minor time, making lists of prospects. Here's minor time, keeping books on prospects. Here's minor time, going to see the prospect. 
Here's minor time, evaluating the prospect after you've been there. That's all minor time. Here's major time, in the presence of the prospect. That's, my, that's major time. And if you took a look, if you're in sales and you took a look at a week, you'd say, my gosh, I'm spending 90% of my time on the minor stuff and so little time on the major stuff in the presence of. How many hours in the presence of in my day? How many hours in the presence of during my sales week? Because the time that really counts is in the presence of majors and minors. Little phrase I have says, don't mistake movement for achievement. It's not that difficult to get busy. What you have to do is check to see what you're busy on. Because it's easy to haul out the trash and fix the screen door, get the car washed, take the kids to school. I mean, it's easy to stay busy, right? The key is on what? You cannot solve today's time management problems with yesterday's time management thinking. What we've noticed is the emergence of a new type of thinker, somebody that we refer to as a multiplier. And multipliers use what we call three-dimensional thinking. While most people only make decisions based on urgency and importance, multipliers are making a third calculation which is based on significance. And if urgency is how soon does something matter, and importance is how much does it matter, then significance is how long is it going to matter? If you think about the, the modern day to-do list, which is one of the, the key strategies or tools that we have, we ask ourselves when we assemble our to-do list, we say, what's the most important thing I can do today? But that is not how multipliers think. Multipliers instead ask the question, what can I do today that would make tomorrow better? What can I do right now that would make the future better? They're making the significance calculation. See, while when I say multiply your time, that might sound a little bit superfluous. It might sound like an over-exaggeration, but it really is not. Now, while it is true that we all have the same amount of time inside of one day, 24 hours, 1,440 minutes, 86,400 seconds. And there's nothing that any of us can do to create more time in one day. But that's exactly the problem. That type of thinking is the problem. What we have to do is break out of that paradigm and instead think about tomorrow. And that brings us to the premise for how you multiply time. The way that you multiply time is simple. You multiply your time by giving yourself the emotional permission to spend time on things today that give you more time tomorrow. That's the significance calculation. You multiply time by giving yourself the emotional permission to spend time on things today that create more time tomorrow. The significance calculation changes everything. When you work, work. When you play, play. Don't mix the two. Don't work at play. I used to take my family to the beach and I would bring my briefcase. I learned not to do that. Or at the beach, I'm saying I should be at the office. I should be at the office. Now my family's upset because I'm at the beach and I'm thinking office, office, office. Now when I'm at the office, I'm thinking what? I got to get my family to the beach, the beach, the beach. So things are not going too well at the office because I'm thinking beach and things are not going too well at the beach because I'm thinking office. Here's what I learned to do. At the beach, be at the beach. At the office, be at the office. When you work, work. When you play, play. Don't mix the two. Don't work at play. Now here's one of the most important ones. Don't play at work. Work is too serious. You don't want the reputation of being the office joker. It's not a good one. Yes, there's time for some pleasant stories. Yes, there's time for a little humor. Yes, uh, best if it's a happy office, of course. But I'm telling you, you got to be serious about work because you're parting with a piece of your life for the work you do. Your work costs you a piece of your life. Here's what it's called. Serious business. Not grim, not unhappy, but serious. you got to treat work with all due conservative passion. Because it's leading you to your...
future. Next time management essential is concentration, zeroing in, preoccupation is fatal, both on the freeway and in business. You got to keep your mind concentrated. I have a little rule that says, don't start the business day till you get to the office. I used to start my business day in the shower or at the breakfast table, and it just messed up a lot of things. I'm sitting at the breakfast table, guess where my mind is? At the office. I even got mixed up going to the beach and, you know, trying to, you know, do some relaxing time. But sure enough, when I'm in the office, I'm uh, thinking about the beach. And when I'm on the beach, I'm saying I should be at the office. Now, see, that's mixed up. We quoted that little quote from the Reader's Digest in the evening seminar, right? Wherever you are, be there. If you're at the breakfast table, be there. When you're having a conversation with somebody, be there. When you're on your way to work, be there. Enjoy the ride. Well, take a look around you. What's going on? Study human nature. What's happening? You know, be there. And then when you get to the office, you know, go for it. Next time management essential is learn to say no. Boy, it's easy to overload your calendar, get yourself into all kinds of time management problems simply because you didn't have the the strength to say no when you should have said no. It's much more difficult to say no and then try to get out of it later, call back, make the arrangements, uh, you know, go through the whole embarrassment. Better to say no than to say yes and have to back out. 
Ron Reynolds has a good phrase that says, don't let your mouth overload your back. That's good. The Focus Funnel is our attempt to create a visual depiction that codifies the thought process that multipliers go through in their head unconsciously when they are evaluating how to spend their time. It's why some people create extraordinary, explosive, exponential results, and other people seem to kind of just create linear traction. And it works like this. If your tasks all come into the top of the funnel, the first question a multiplier asks is, can I eliminate this? Is it even worth doing? It's another example how everything you know about time management is wrong, or at least that it has changed, because most of us use to-do lists, and multipliers realize that next generation time management has much more to do with what you don't do than what you do do. It's, it time multipliers realize that perfection is achieved not only when nothing more can be added, but when nothing more can be taken away. It is the permission to ignore. Because anything that we say no to today creates more time for us tomorrow. The challenge emotionally is that we struggle with guilt and we struggle with wanting to say no, but really feeling like we have to say yes. And so we go through life trying to never say no. And in one of the interviews I conducted with the multiplier, they said something that changed my life. They said, Rory, it's futile to go through life trying to never say no. What you have to realize is that you are always saying no to something. Because anytime you say yes to one thing, you are simultaneously saying no to an infinite number of others. If you can't
eliminate the task. The next question is, can I automate the task? Anything that I create a process for today saves me time tomorrow. It's like setting up online bill pay. I, I never have two hours in my day to set up online bill pay. I just don't have time. And if I had two hours in my day, I would never use it to set up online bill pay. But a multiplier realizes that if I save 30 minutes a month from paying my bills by setting up online bill pay, then it makes sense to invest those two hours because then after just four months time, I will have broken even on that investment. And every month thereafter, I will get something we call ROTI, return on time invested. Automation is to your time exactly what compounding interest is to your money. Just like compounding interest takes money and it makes money into more money, automation takes time and it makes it into more time. The way that wealthy people think about money is exactly the same way that multipliers think about time and they give themselves the permission to invest, invest the time and energy to automate the process. If it can't be automated, then the next question is, can it be delegated? Can I teach someone else how to do this? But if you ask the average person, you said, are there things you know you could be delegating to somebody else? We would say yes. But then you say, well, why don't you train someone else to do it? And what most of us would say is we say, well, because they just can't do it as well as I can. And that may be true once, maybe twice, but it is only true absent the significance calculation. Because if you think longer term, you realize they'll be able to master the task just like you were. Significance changes everything. It's how you multiply your time. It's giving yourself the permission of imperfect for a little while, because over time they'll be able to... Welcome to my party, we're just getting started. A life is a dream or a nightmare scarring. Hand me a drink, cause I think I'm going all in. Get me a shrink, who can catch me when I'm falling? Cover up my scars, flip the handlebars, crashing in my car. Wake up in a bar, I'll be a superstar. Just on my avatar, this world is so bizarre. Empty out the reservoir. Yeah. I'm taking six shots, yeah, straight to the face And I wanna get lost, I'm sick of this place Don't know how to stop when I'm feeling this way So I'm taking six shots till I'm feeling okay I think I'm going crazy, don't think I'll get on safe So I'm taking six shots, all straight to the face I'm taking six shots, are you coming with me? I'm taking six shots, yeah, straight to the face And I wanna get lost, I'm sick of this place Don't know how to stop But we know calculus Damn, ain't that fabulous Can't wait to apply all those mathematicus But we can't get a job That pays us enough I'm about to pop off Fuck you, you're lost We all know that we never really want a boss So I'ma do what I want to Something I can't undo Yeah, I'ma do what I want to Something I can't undo I'm taking six shots, yeah, straight to the face And I wanna get lost, I'm sick of this place Don't know how to stop when I'm feeling this way So I'm taking six shots till I'm feeling okay I think I'm going crazy Don't think I'll get on set. So I'm taking six shots, all straight to the face I'm taking six shots, are you coming with me? I'm taking six shots, yeah, straight to the face And I wanna get lost
to figure it out. Now, if you can't eliminate the automate or delegate a task, that task drops out the bottom of the funnel. And at that point, there's only one remaining question. And that question is, should I do this task now? Must it be done now? Or can it wait until later? If the task must be done now, then that's what we call concentrate. It's the permission to protect. All right, the permission to protect. It's, it's, it's all about focus and eliminating distractions. And honestly, there's nothing all that exciting or new there. However, if you ask the question, can this wait until later? And you decide that the answer is yes, then that's not eliminate, automate, or delegate. That is what we call procrastinate on purpose procrastinate on purpose. Now you're not going to procrastinate on it forever. You're going to pop that activity back to the top of the funnel, at which point it will enter into a holding pattern where it will cycle through the focus funnel until inevitably one day, eventually one of the other four strategies will be executed on whatever that task is. And what you find is that if something can continually wait, often what happens is you eventually develop the courage to do what you should have done in the first place, which was eliminate it. Or you discover a system for how to automate it. Or someone rises up to the call of leadership. They rise up to the occasion and it ends up being delegated. Or it ends up becoming something that is significant enough for you to spend your time on. Waiting to do something that we know we should do but we don't feel like doing, that's procrastination. That's the killer of all success. But waiting to do something because we're deciding intentionally that now is not the right time, that isn't procrastination. That isn't the killer of success. That's a virtue. And it's an art form that the world really needs, which is patience. The patience to put off the insignificant things, like checking email 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You multiply your time by giving yourself the emotional permission to spend time on things today that create more time tomorrow.
regardless of your religious affiliation or your spiritual beliefs, hopefully you'll have an appreciation for the way that Scripture says the world was created. And in Genesis, God has created this perfect world. And it says something amazing that we're created in His image. And then in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, He gives the first command to all of humanity. And what is that command? Thou shalt have no other gods before me? No. Is it love thy neighbor as thyself? No. God's first command to all of humanity, be fruitful and multiply. Next, the time you've already committed to labor is enough time. If you're working already eight, ten hours a day, that's about it. You just can't work much more than that. Uh, bursts at a time, you can work 12, 14, 16, right? And I'm sure we've all learned to do that, put in the extra time. But after a while, you pretty well have to put your life in balance or your health is in jeopardy and your heart's in jeopardy, your blood pressure's in jeopardy, a lot of things uh, if you don't stay in balance. So you don't have to put in any more hours, probably. All you have to do is just make better use of the hours. A cliche we've all heard. It's not the hours you put in, it's what you put in the hours that counts. Just be more alert to the things that might be stealing your time. Here's why. Time is like capital. You can't let someone steal your seed corn. You can't let someone steal your capital. And you can't let someone steal your time. You must designate your time. And some of the time that you designate, you must not let anyone steal. Casual time, you might let someone intrude and steal a little bit and take a little bit, but not serious time.